Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our unboxing and first impressions look at the Yumadigi Bison. This is a affordable, rugged Android smartphone that sells for under 150 bucks. And for the money, we are getting a device that has, again, a waterproof casing. It's also going to be shockproof, so resistant if you're taking it outdoors and, and need some extra durability. You also get 6 gigabytes of built-in RAM and 128 gigs of built-in storage, further expandable via a micro SD card slot, which are both pretty good considering the budget friendly price. Of course, it's an unlocked phone and it supports 4G SIMs around the world. Also has a 48 megapixel main camera as well as a 24 megapixel selfie cam on the front which is using a water drop notch. We have a 6.3 inch 1080p display that's been protected by Corning Gorilla Glass and a pretty large 5000 milliamp hour capacity battery which should last for at least two days on a full charge. There's also built-in NFC and runs on stock Android 10.0. So on paper, we're getting a lot of value for the money as usual from Yumadigi, and we've been pretty impressed with their past handset. So here's to hoping that this device will also hold up after getting more testing. There's a side mounted fingerprint scanner. Like other outdoor rugged phones, there's a few special sensors built on in. This one here by Bosch has a barometer and a altimeter, so it can measure kind of your altitude when you're outdoors. Claims to even have some form of liquid cooling to prevent overheating when you're gaming. And it's powered by the MediaTek Helio P60 octa-core processor, which is a pretty good choice here. It's usually reserved for mid-end phones, which sell for a little bit more than this one here. Again, only 150 bucks. So it should be ample power to operate simple tasks, uh, web browsing, doing some gaming, things like that. By the way, the phone comes in two colors. There is a lava orange edition that we have here, and it also comes in a yellow. Let's open the two seals here just by prying this apart. A slightly more rugged phone also makes sense, I think, here in 2020, where we are in the middle of a pandemic, and perhaps you want a device that's going to be more wear-resistant, easier to clean and wipe. So here it is, the device itself. We'll take a closer look at it in a moment. Underneath here, we do have a quick user manual device in, and we also have a standard kind of wall adapter using USB. Supports up to 18 watts for charging, which is pretty good. Should be fully recharged in around two hours or so, and a red accented charging cable that is using a standard USB type C. Now for our phone, we do have a plastic wrap on the rear that kind of shows and labels what the individual cameras are. Uh, the main sensor seems to be on the side here versus the depth sensor. This one here is going to be the macro lens and then the wide angle lens. We do have a dual tone LED flash. And first impressions here is it is a pretty attractive overall design. It does have kind of a gamer or rugged vibe to it. However, it's not a overly thick or too heavy of a device. Still feels reasonable in the hand, kind of like a phone that already has a case maybe attached to it. And then some sensors here, which are for the altimeter and the barometer. And down below here, we also have a kind of lanyard strap that you can use to hang it onto a keychain or something like that. The rails of the phone are constructed out of aluminum and metal, so it does feel quite sturdy. It says designed by Yumadigi there. And otherwise, the bottom here houses the Type-C port. There's a microphone, and then the other side, again, has also a waterproof, shockproof kind of label there, SIM card tray. And then on the very top, we do have a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is actually quite impressive on a ultra rugged phone. Has a 6.3 inch display. It's actually quite normal size by 2020 standards. And it's similar to the aforementioned A7 Pro that we saw from Yumadigi a few months back. Uh, you can see that side by side, their footprints are uh, pretty close. And then you can see the difference there in terms of thickness, which is going to add a little bit to the Yumadigi Bison, but the weights are actually both about the same. And then here we have it against another rugged phone that we checked out uh, earlier this year, the Conquest S16. However, the S16 is significantly more expensive, selling for around $500. Alright, so the setup screen here, we actually already have the device turned on, and it advertises some of the features once again and there is a second layer underneath a pre-applied screen protector that is protecting the Corning Gorilla Glass display. The bezel size of the device are also quite reasonable for a rugged phone. Sure it's not going to be invisible but it's still quite small and compact I think and looks pretty clean and modern. A very small water drop notch and then overall there's a slight raised bump from the uh, built-in rubber accents that protects the device. If you drop it, it should still prevent the screen from getting cracked, for instance. So there is some extra protection going on and a pretty interesting look. And then setting up the fingerprint scanner, the placement here on the edge on the left is actually pretty comfortable. And again, it's quite familiar if you've used the Sony Xperia phone in the past. 
First impressions would be that the screen is actually quite good in terms of viewing angles. It's an IPS panel, so no problems in terms of looking at it from different angles. Colors are still looking quite natural and overall a pretty sensitive screen as well when I was doing some simple swiping and entering the password of things thanks to the use of the Corning Gorilla Glass, so no problems in terms of touch sensitivity either. And again, it is slightly raised in terms of the rubber bumpers on the edges, which uh, prevents the screen from damaging if you accidentally put it face down. Again, guys, keep in mind this is just our unboxing, so we'll go more in depth with our review, but this is as bright as the screen gets. We do have all of the different options here, including access to a glove mode. It makes the screen even more sensitive, so if you're outdoors performing some type of sports or using it in the snow, it can still be responsive, which is pretty cool and again we do have some updates it seems that's ready to install so there is some firmware updates as well as NFC again which is built on in a nice little extra that usually you can't find at this price we just have the stock Google Apps built on in the Play Store and then some other things on the side here which are pre-installed but overall it is very clean the toolbox by the way is basically some of the extra utilities like a magnifier alarm compass pressure sensor things like that it's all consolidated into this one app where you can find all the extra sensors and then Zello is one of the only preloaded apps on here here's a quick snippet of some of the other wallpapers which are pre-installed you get a few options on here that again show off the vibrancy of the screen and by the way it's also where you can customize the smart keys so that you can single tap double tap or long press to do things like open up certain applications and there's also the system navigation. If you want to get rid of these traditional keys to make it more of a full screen experience, you can opt for the gesture navigation method instead. Maximizes the screen real estate, so you can use just gestures to swipe up and get rid of certain apps, as well as uh, kind of swipe from the edges of a phone to go back by one page. So that kind of takes you back and everything just looks a bit more immersive. And then just a very quick look at the fingerprint scanner speed. Let's just put our thumb here. It unlocks actually fairly quickly, I'd say. It is always on, so you can even unlock it when the phone's display is off. So again, that's been our first impressions unboxing look at the Yumadigi Bison rugged budget Android smartphone. We'll be doing a lot more testing and come out with a more detailed review soon, including things like the camera performance and whatnot. So be sure to stay tuned if you're interested. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. Again, another promising, affordable Android smartphone from the folks over at Yumadigi.